Now that's driving the lane. To get an inside look at Skywalker's 50-inch vertical leap, we wired him up with high-tech motion capture sensors from Vicon Hausa Moves. This is not a computer simulation. This is Skywalker's actual jump. The car is over five feet wide and almost three feet to the top of the doors. To clear it, Skywalker has to use every inch of his vertical leap. As he approaches the car, Skywalker lowers his center of gravity. Muscles fire, lower back, glutes, quads, and calves, linking together to drive his energy down into the court. The result? Lift off. At the peak of his flight, Skywalker's hand is over 11 feet above the court and he had to travel just as far horizontally. All this adds up to an easy two. So the answer to the question, what can the highest flyers really jump over? It's that thing parked in your driveway. Coming up, NFL superstar Chad Johnson takes on his biggest opponent ever. An elephant. When we return with more of Sports Science. To get state-of-the-art science, you need state-of-the-art equipment. Using cutting-edge technology, we've transformed this hangar into a one-of-a-kind sports testing ground. The Sports Science Lab is 28,000 square feet of cool breakthrough technology. Designed to get inside the minds and bodies of the most elite athletes in the world. This is definitely by far the coolest and newest thing I've seen. This cutting-edge laboratory is designed to answer every question that's ever popped into your head while watching a game. That is so sweet. Every barroom debate can be settled. Every myth challenged. Every mystery solved. We're out to debunk the oldest myth in sports. Accelerometers, pressure sensors, eye trackers, high-speed cameras, crash test dummies, and Vanguard motion capture technology. All to give us an inside look at the games we play. When I walked in here, I just didn't know what, you know, what was going on. If it was a movie or what it was. There's some things I learned here that I'm going to use in my training in science. It validates uh, my instincts. If it jumps, punches, kicks, throws, busts, or slams, this is the place to put it to the test. The quarterback's job is to hit the wide receiver. But when there's a mob of angry men trying to crush him, he needs as big a target downfield as possible. The biggest land mammal on the planet is an African elephant. Seems like that would be pretty easy to hit, right? So here's the question. What's a bigger target? An elite wide receiver or an elephant? In our quest to find the highest flyer in sports, it's time to look at the range of the wide receiver. For the low down and wide outs, we brought in NFL All-Pro superstar Chad Johnson, a.k.a. Ocho Cinco. Great hands, speed. I can catch anything. When I do catch the ball, it's showtime. When Chad goes vertical with full extension, 
he can really climb the ladder. Wow, you got the top, you got past the top. He jumped to almost 11 feet that's high. Our scientific analysis, that's up there. On par with the greatest jumpers in the NBA and the stunning leaps of Skywalker. So let's see how those hands and legs take to the air and create a phenomenal target for a quarterback. So you're known for your vertical leap and your incredible catches. What we want to know is how great of a range do you actually have? I'm ready. Let's do this. Ready? Go. For the first time ever, Ocho's incredible range is captured with our Venom high-speed camera. It works. It works. I like how they slow it down, man. That is so sweet. Standing six feet one inch, a static Chad offers a limited target, roughly 12 square feet. However, when Chad gets his hands up 11 feet in the air, that target expands to 22 square feet. Now, add his range to the left, right, up high and down low, and Chad's potential target size balloons to 190 square feet. That's a huge target for a quarterback. So how does it compare to an elephant? The average male African savanna measures roughly 10 feet to the top of the shoulder with a length of 19 feet. That's about 190 square feet of target. The same target area Chad creates. But this is only considering two dimensions, height and length, the X and Y axis. How does the equation change when we examine three dimensions? By adding his forward and backward mobility, the Z-axis, Chad's range blows the elephant away. Look at it this way. If a quarterback had to choose between an elephant going across the middle or Chad, he should aim for Ocho. Because Chad's total reach covers an astonishing 2,786 cubic feet. The best part of the experiment? We didn't have to clean up after Ocho. Coming up next, what's faster, a Major League Fastball or the blink of an eye? Find out when we return in a moment with more of Sports Science. Some say that the single hardest skill to master in all of sports is hitting major league pitching. The expression is, blink and you'll miss it. So the question is, when you're facing a 95 mile an hour fastball, if you blink, will you miss it? What's faster, a major league fastball or the blink of an eye? To find out, we enlisted one of the best all-around athletes to ever play in the bigs, all-star center fielder, Steve Finley. Finley excels in both speed and power, and his reaction times are second to none. In 2006, he became only the sixth player ever to reach 300 stolen bases and 300 home runs in a career. And he's hit some big home runs, like this 2004 walk-off Grand Slam to clinch the division title for the Dodgers. Thing to do in sports, hands down, is hit a baseball. I mean, it, it, it sinks. The guys are changing speeds, throwing curveball, slider, splits, changes. To be able to see that spin as soon as it comes out of his hand and determine whether you're going to swing it or not from your ball or strike. And then it's coming at you between anywhere from 85 to 100 miles an hour. And when you're talking portions of an inch off in your swing, 
is a determining factor. We hit a bouncer, a line drive, a fly ball, a home run. That's pretty tough. Now it's time for Finley to step up to the plate. We brought in a flame-throwing Major League prospect. 90-mile-an-hour fastballs will put Finley to the test. Our phantom high-speed camera will record every millisecond of each pitch. And we'll be able to determine if a Major League fastball is really faster than the blink of an eye. The orbicularis oculi muscle lowers the eyelid, and the levator palpebrae superioris raises it. Those are some mighty big words to describe some teeny little muscles. But no matter how you describe it, the average blink takes 400 milliseconds. That's four tenths of a second.